Okay, so welcome back to episode two of the CBR 600R overhaul series. In this video, we're going to be looking at replacing the oil and the oil filter. So replacing your oil and oil filter is probably one of the most easiest and most important things that you can do for your bike. Um, all manufacturers will specify in their owner's manual what the, the frequency should be uh, for the particular bike we're working on here, the CBR600, uh, Honda recommends every 8,000 miles or every year. Uh, for me, I think 8,000 is a bit much. I tend to do it every two or 3,000 miles uh, or every year across any bikes that I've always had. It's not a hard job to do. You're only going to need a few basic tools. Um, so you're going to need a decent uh, wrench and a few adapters for that. So you're going to need a 5mm Allen bolt. Uh, this is for the fairing. You're going to need a 12mm for the sump plug and then a 17mm in our case here because we've actually got a K&N filter installed on this bike already. Uh, the K&N filter has a nut welded on the end to it. If you haven't got the K&N filter, you're going to need some kind of wrench adapter. Uh, so a few examples here, um, like a strap style, a chain style, you can get pliers style. Um, I've seen people putting screwdrivers through them before, so really whatever works for you to get the whole filter off. For the oil and the oil filter, uh, we're going to be using a high flow filter oil filter. I will put the part number for this in the uh, comments below. And I'm going to be putting Liquid Molly uh, Synthetic 10W40 in the bike here. So Honda recommends 10W40 or 10W30. Um, lots of reports of people using different types of oils for this bike and other bikes as well. So do your own research with that. Uh, but for this case, we're going to be going for 10W40. Uh, we'll be using a new magnetic sump plug, um, so not essential. Uh, the crush washer inside here, they do recommend you replace each time, but again, that is up to your preference, really. Uh, you will find some disposal bag on looks very helpful as well. So heat is going to reduce the viscosity of the oil that we've already got in the bike now. Uh, so the first thing we're going to do is take it off the stands, get it outside, uh, fire it up, let it get up to temperature, and we'll bring it back in and drain the oil out. Obviously, we've already removed the fairings of this bike. We did that in the previous video, so I'll throw a card up here now um, if you're not sure how to do that. You don't necessarily need to remove the entire fairings. Um, all you'll need to remove is the bottom, uh, the bottom cover, so there's three bolts on each side, and you can pull the whole bottom part of the fairing away to gain access to the uh, the filter and the sun plug. Okay, so that's the bike up to temperature. Uh, the oil's nice and hot. Uh, we're back in the garage. The bike is on the paddock stand, so it's important to keep uh, to use a paddock stand or a centre stand if you've got one. Um, just keep the bike leveled, make sure the oil is going to drain out. So the key parts here um, for this particular bike that we want to be looking at is the oil filter, which is just inside here. So obviously do take care because these header pipes are going to be hot. Um, as I mentioned, the k &M filter here has got a, a nut on the end of it, which aids massively in getting it off. The sub plug, just here at the bottom, um, so it's 12mm. Um, and then the oil drain cap, which is on the side of the engine here. Um, so you will see... The sump plug, not really a problem, but the filter, um, any oil that's going to come out of the filter here is going to go straight onto your headers. Um, it's going to stick there and when you fire the bike up it's going to smoke like mad. Um, there is probably some scope for team and catch fire. So what I would recommend, um, you could either remove the headers off if you want to, a little bit more involved. Um, a preferred option would be to use some tin foil, coat all of the header pipes here, make a little bit of a funnel with a, a spout coming down. Um, to catch any oil that comes out of the filter when you remove it. So we'll do that now. Okay, 
Okay, so we've got the uh, headers all wrapped up nicely with foil now, so it should be minimal oil getting on those. Um, I've got an old pan underneath here, you can get specialist oil catchers, um, but I've always just used an old dish pan. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is release the sump plug here, so let's get you guys set up so you can see what's going on. <coughs> so you're going to need a 12mm, um, and you just want to stick him on there. Uh, sometimes you have to give these a little bit of a crack, work them loose. Um, and then you want to take it out just by hand. Uh, keep some pressure on it because as soon as you remove this, you're going to get hot oil coming outside of uh, spilling out from the sump. So they're not a big bolt. And there she goes. So as that's draining, let's stick our old sump to the side here. These gloves off a second so I don't get oil everywhere. So you see, engine's nice and hot, that oil's coming out nice and quickly. So you can remove uh, the oil filler cap up here. That's just going to speed up the process a little bit, get some air through there. Yeah, do take care when you take this out. Uh, there's no o rings or anything on the inside of the seals that we need to be intact. So we're going to leave that for a few minutes, uh, let, make sure it's all drained out. I'm going to pull the oil filter off next. Okay, so the majority of the oil is out of the, uh, the sump now, so let's get this oil filter off. Um, so as I mentioned here, the k &M filter that's currently on this bike's got a 17mm uh, bolt actually, uh, not sorry, it's welded to the end of it. Um, if you haven't got a k &M filter already on there, um, a chain or a strap style ratchet is probably going to be the best because there's not a whole lot of access in there. Um, if you're really struggling, you can simply just unbolt the uh, the coolant tank here just to get a little bit of leverage. Um, as I mentioned before, do take care because the header pipes will be very hot. So you can see how much easier it is with that bolt on there. Okay, so same as with some plug, you just want to get it just hand tight and you can feed the rest of it off by hand. Obviously do take care again because there is hot oil inside. Now those vinyl gloves I mentioned come in very handy and also the tin foil there. You can see on the bottom that big pool of oil already on, inside the foil. <coughs> so these k &M filters, um, I've heard a lot of mixed uh, mixed opinions with the mainly around this bolt here on the end. Um, I've heard a lot of reports of people saying that the, uh, the oil actually can leak out of where this uh, nut's been welded on. I've used K&M filters on all sorts of different bikes. I've never had a problem myself. Um, no, I'm not putting a, a K&M filter back on this bike, but this isn't the reason for it. As I said, I've never had an issue with them. Um, if you do decide to go for one of these K&M filters, when you install the filter on the bike, make sure you don't fasten it with this uh, this nut here. And um, this is nuts only just aid in removing. Um, so it's up by hand tight and just use a traditional strap just to give it a little pinch um, to bring it up to spec. What's important also to check when you're removing the filter is to make sure the little o-ring is still present and um, so you can see here it's a little bit bad to see because of the oil but the, the o-ring is actually still sat inside the filter housing sometimes the o-ring can come off and sit onto the spindle um that the filter sits on and obviously if that happens when you put your new filter on it's not going to sit tight and you could have an oil leak okay so we've got most of the oil out now so that inside there it's a little awkward to see sorry but that's the spindle that your oil filter is going to sit onto um Obviously the sump here, last few drips just coming out of there, so we'll probably just give that a few minutes just to make sure everything's out. While um, while you're waiting for the remaining oil to come out, um, it's a good chance to check the old oil. Um, so I'm not sure how long this oil's been in the bike, I don't think it's all that long if I'm honest. Um, but just take a little look to it, it should be, you know, as you see here, fairly, fairly thin now, but a nice jet black colour. Um, if you've got any metallic colourings, uh, particularly on the surface um, of the oil, you may want to take a look at that because that could imply that there's some wear going on inside of the engine. Um, if it's a new bike, maybe don't worry about it as much as just getting run in. But if it's an older bike, certainly want to be taking a look at that. Um, if you have any flakes uh, or metal chunks, um, that's a sign for concern. That's something drastic inside the engine that you'll need to strip down to take a look at. 
And if there's anything that looks like fibre, you know, little tiny pieces of hair almost, uh, that could imply that there's some un un uh, uneven clutch wear. So again, you might want to take a look at that. And as you can see here, the foil doing all kinds of favours, just catching all that oil there, saving it going onto the headers. Um, so once everything's run out, we'll pull the oil off before we, uh, before we get going. Okay, so now all of the oil has left the engine, it's time to start reassembling. So if you're going to be using the sump plug that came from the bike, just take a good look at the, um, the crush washer here. Make sure it's not obviously damaged. The crush washer is what they recommend that you replace each time that you do a, um, an oil change. Um, if you are going to reuse the same one and the crush washer is good, just be careful with the torque settings. Um, so the torque setting for this particular bolt is 30 newton meters. Uh, which is around 22 foot pounds of torque now that is based on the crush washer being a new washer and not already being used so if you go ahead and then apply 22 foot pounds of torque to an already uh, an already crush washer it's actually going to exert more um stress onto the oil pan could potentially crack it um i personally don't use a torque uh, torque wrench on uh, the, the wrench or on the plug i just go by hand we're going to be putting a new um a new drain plug and a new crush washer on this bike anyway. Now this drain plug is actually a magnetic drain plug. And you can see the magnet on the end there. The idea being this should catch any uh, filaments of metal or anything like that that are floating around the engine that the oil filler uh, the oil filler that missed. So let's get to it. As we take a look at the new oil filter, we'll make sure it had a protective cover on side of it. And just take a good look around it, make sure there's no um, obvious dints, uh, any holes, any obvious damage or anything like that. Um, once you're happy, you want to take a little bit of the old oil here, got on the end of your finger, and you want to just line the seal. Mind the rubber o ring, and um, you can go ahead inside, stick a little bit on the threads as well if you liked. Now, some people do um, pre fill the oil filter with oil. Um, obviously, with this particular bike being side mounted, it's a little bit messy to do that. Um, I don't see it necessarily personally. Um, the oil travels around the engine incredibly quickly. You know, you're only talking a split second or so, really, uh, before the oil gets through the filter and into a place it needs to be. So, providing you don't Start the bike up and start redlining it, you know, just start it up, let it warm up, you're not going to have any problem. <clears throat> so once you're happy with that, we can offer it up to spindle. And you just want to ease that on there. Nice and steady. Definitely don't want to cross thread this, just take your time, get it on hand tight, as tight as you can, um, and then I'm going to go ahead and just use a um, filter strap just to snug it up. Okay, uh, so now that that's done, let's get this old foil out the way. Okay, there we go. Um, so if you do happen to get any uh, any oil on your header, you can use some brake or contact cleaner. Get on there and, and make sure you get all of that off. Now I'm actually going to be cleaning all of these headers and downpipes anyway. Um, that's part of the overhaul series, so I'm not going to worry too much about it. All right, there we go. Everything's tightened up. It's time to start refilling the engine with oil. Um, so we're going to put your oil in through the filler cap just here. You're going to find something like a funnel. It's going to make your life a whole lot easier. Um, you want to be keeping an eye on the sight glass, which is just down here. So it's completely empty at the minute. You want the mark right in the uh, the middle mark there. So the bike takes around three quarts, which is around 2.83 litres. Uh, so we'll probably put two and a half litres in initially, 
um, take it outside, fire it up, get the, en- uh, the oil all around the engine, then we'll come back in and top up to the halfway mark. <laughs> So we're just about in the middle. Uh, it was just under 2.8 litres. Um, so we're going to stick the filler cap back on. Make sure the O-ring is still present and not damaged. If you don't fasten that up, obviously, you're going to get oil all over the place. Um, we'll take the bike upside now. Let it run for 30 seconds a minute. Just get the, uh, the oil all around the engine in it, the new filter. And then we'll bring it back in, top it up appropriately, and we'll be about done. Once you're outside and the bike's running, you want to keep an eye on the oil uh, pressure light just to make sure that one goes out. It's this one just here. Okay, so the bike's had a run. Uh, and as you can see now, it looks as though there's no oil at all inside. But once we come up just ever so slightly, now we're not going to need a lot here. Really, it's just a case of little by little. Let's see what we need. Now you just have to be patient. So obviously, it takes a little bit of time for the oil to run from the top of the engine down to the level. That's it. Um, so you want to be keeping an eye on the sump plug. Um, if that starts leaking, it's probably going to imply that you need a new crush washer. And also keep an eye on the oil filter. Um, if that starts leaking, it's probably the oil rings damaged uh, or it's possibly not on tight enough. In the next video, uh, we're going to be flushing the coolant, uh, replacing all of that, and also replacing the spark plugs. Uh, so that being said, stick around, subscribe, and uh, I'll see you in the next one.